Welcome to ECLEMU, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed the three modes of heat transfer, that is radiation, convection, and conduction. And we discussed the individual applications of the three modes of heat transfer. In conduction, we said it's applied in the manufacture of cooking utensils, where we place a good conductor on a place where we put on the flame and then an insulator where a person handles that utensil. Then we discussed uh, convection and we said it's used in a car or engine cooling system where the hot liquid will move up due to low density and cold liquid will move down due to high density. And in that case, they will create convection current and the engine can be cooled. Then later we discussed how heat radiation can be applied and we saw solar concentrators where we use the idea where you can convert heat up to one point which can be used to heat substances. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss one of the applications which combine the three modes of heat transfer, that is conduction, convection, and radiation at once, which is a thermos flask, sometimes it's called a vacuum flask, or it can be called a dewar flask from the name of a person who discovered it in 1892 then later we will discuss the greenhouse effect my name is albert i hope you will enjoy the lesson by the end of this lesson i expect you to give a brief history of a thermos flask then explain how a thermos flask reduce heat transfer by conduction convection and radiation then later discuss the greenhouse effect and the application or the effects of greenhouse effect. Just a brief history of a thermos flask. A thermos flask sometimes is called a vacuum flask, a vacuum flask, or we can call it a, a dewar flask, dewar flask. We call it a dewar flask based on the name of the person who discovered in 1892 a Scottish chemist and physicist called Sir James DeWall. Sir James DeWall. Sir James DeWall was interested in low temperature physics. He was interested in low temperature physics and his research was in, based on matter at extremely low temperature. Matter at extremely, extremely low temperature. So Sir James DeWall was interested in matter at extremely low temperature. And this is the man who made it possible for us to transport, for us to transport our gases at in liquid state. It made it possible for us to transport gases in liquid state. Remember, the gases we use at homes in cooking or even the gases that we use in hospital, that is oxygen gas, it is transported in liquid state. And the only man who made it possible for it to be transported in liquid state is Sir James Duwall. And this man also contributed so much in chemistry in a, an industrial process that we call fractional distribution of liquefied air, fractional distribution, distribution, of liquefied liquefied air so this is the man who made it possible for us to separate uh, gases of the atmosphere that is nitrogen argon oxygen from the atmosphere and collect it as a gas so we can now focus on the working mechanism of a thermos flask and how it prevents heat loss out of the thermos flask or it prevents heat gain into the thermos flask. But before that, let's focus on the major parts of the thermos flask. A thermos flask has a rubber pad, which is made up of a rubber, which is a poor conductor of heat. It also has a rubber stopper or a cork. Then it has what we call a silvered. It has silvered double glass walls. We are going to see why it is silvered. Then we have a case. We have a rubber ring bud, also made of a, a rubber. Then we have a vacuum seal, and then we have a shock absorber. So the first part which we are going to discuss is the stopper rubber bud and the rubber ring. This one are made of 
uh, rubber and rubber is a poor conductor of heat so this one will prevent heat loss through conduction because rubber is a poor conductor of heat then we have the silvered glass wall remember when we were discussing radiant heat we said radiant heat can be reflected just like light so if we have silvered glass wall it means it can reflect the radiant heat so if heat is coming from outside into the flask when it means this silvered wall it will be reflected out so this one will be reflected reflected out and if you have a hot liquid inside the heat wants to move out it meets the silvered glass wall it will be reflected in and when it reaches the other wall it will be reflected in so this reflection will continue within the liquid and the liquid now will keep its temperature maintained like that so silvered glass wall prevent heat loss through radiation because the radiant heat can be reflected within the liquid or the outside liquid or the outside radiant heat which want to come in will be reflected out so the liquid which is inside will maintain its temperature at that point then we have a vacuum we have a vacuum and a vacuum is found in between these uh double glass wall this is a vacuum that's another part of this so this vacuum a vacuum remember is an empty space where you don't have even air and remember we said the first two modes of heat transfer that is conduction and convection cannot be trans or cannot be cannot move heat if you don't have a material so heat conduction by and heat convection cannot travel in a vacuum so this vacuum is going to prevent heat loss through conduction and convection so another one we have is a vacuum seal a vacuum seal is the one which prevents air from coming into this vacuum because if you open this seal the vacuum the air from outside will enter into this vacuum that's why when a vacuum or a vacuum flask falls down if this pin is broken then your vacuum flask will be inefficient then we have another part that is shock absorbers shock absorbers they prevent the thermos flask from breaking remember these silvered glass walls this uh, this is the glass these silver these double walls are made of glass which is very fragile so to prevent it from from breaking especially on a slight fall you have to use these shock absorbers and the rubber ring pads so we have discussed the thermos flask and how it works we have said it has major part like it has a plastic rubber and rubber band rings which prevent heat loss by conduction it also has uh, double walls and these double walls are silvered they are silver so that they can prevent heat loss by radiation since they can reflect heat then we have the double walls with a vacuum the vacuum now prevent heat loss through conduction because conduction can be transported when we have a material and convection which can only take place in liquids so and the gases but since we have heat transfer by radiation then we use silvered wall but for conduction it's minimized through a vacuum and the rubber pads and rubber rings then we have shock absorbers which prevent the flask from breaking then finally we have a vacuum seal which prevents air from entering into the vacuum which can make the vacuum flask inefficient so the last part of this lesson is the greenhouse effect and i'm very sure you have ever heard this word the greenhouse effect especially during this time of climate change so greenhouse effect is a scenario or a phenomenon in which heat is allowed to pass through a transparent material you allow heat to pass through a transparent material but once the heat has been received it cannot go or it cannot be reflected or emitted outside the system so if i can draw a sketch of a greenhouse here this is the base of a greenhouse and then this is the the greenhouse material then inside here you have some material here so this part here making this a greenhouse is transparent and this transparent material will allow radiant heat of high energy radiant heat of very high energy penetrate from the sun into the greenhouse so this transparent material will allow this high energy high energy radiant heat radiant heat to penetrate through this transparent material but once this heat has penetrated into this system this heat 
all this material, all this system here, we also try to emit the heat. When it tries to emit the heat, this heat will be of very low energy, so it will not go beyond this transparent material. So the heat which will be emitted by this uh, material which is inside will be of very low energy, and this heat will only be transmitted or reflected within the system. So this is low, low energy radiant heat. Radiant heat. So the system receives high energy radiant heat which will penetrate through the transparent material. But the system will emit low energy radiant heat. It means the heat cannot go beyond that material. So through this, heat will accumulate within the greenhouse continuously and then the system inside will attain some certain amount of heat. So these greenhouses are used in agriculture where we maintain a specific heat or a specific temperature within the greenhouse where crops can grow. Now, in terms of the atmosphere, remember, from the sun to the atmosphere, we have a space which we call the ozone layer. We have a space where we call ozone layer. And ozone layer, ozone layer is a oxygen, which is the trivariant, three oxygens. Now, this ozone layer, if you use greenhouse gases, like sulfur four oxide, carbon four oxide, carbon two oxide, chlorine, these gases will destroy this ozone layer. How will they destroy this ozone layer? They will go and react with this oxygen, and then they will break the oxygen into oxygen atoms. When oxygen is broken into atoms, then it means the ozone layer will be broken. Now, the rays from the sun, this ozone layer now will become transparent. Now, the rays from the sun will be penetrating through into the atmosphere. Remember, the atmosphere is like a system. The rays will penetrate into the atmosphere, and once they penetrate into the atmosphere, the materials which are on the atmosphere will try to emit heat back. When they emit, it will be of very low energy and it will, go, it, will, it will not go beyond the ozone layer. So through that way, heat will be maintained within the atmosphere. And if this heat is great, especially from the sun, because it has high energy, it might cause very diverse effects, including skin cancer, burning of crops, and many, many other effects of uh, greenhouse effect. So that marks the end of our lesson today and the end of our topic, heat transfer. I hope you enjoyed. In the next lesson, we will discuss a topic called rectilinear propagation of light and reflection on plane surfaces. And we are going to answer a question like, how do we see? How do we see? That is the first question which we are going to discuss. Remember, when we were discussing the introduction to physics, we said this one as a phenomenon. It's not a mass that we see, but now we are going to see how do we see.